everyone. Welcome to the Future DDS Specialty Series. My name is Nick Saber and I'm the current Future DDS intern. I'm sure many of you have the same questions as I do when it, gets, when it comes to getting into a specialty. So today we're going to answer those questions. For this episode, we have Dr. Ngoyan, who is currently uh, completing his periodontics residency at UCSF. Dr. Ngoyan, thank you for being here today. Sure, no problem. Thanks, Nick, for having me. Um, yeah, um, I'm here. I'm a first year pedo resident at UCSF. Um, and yeah, I'm here to answer any questions uh, you have or for the dental community. Awesome. So would you please describe your journey, uh, like where you went to undergrad, where you went to dental school? Just, just a brief summary about that. Sure, yeah. So I went to uh, undergrad UC San Diego. Um, I actually didn't know that dentistry was uh, sort of in my pursuit. Um, my dad's a dentist, so actually that kind of drove me away from dentistry for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Called rebellion, being a kid or whatever. So during undergrad, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and then after undergrad, I actually did a post back at Cal State East Bay. Um, that's once I decided to do dentistry. So I did a post back at Cal State East Bay in Hayward, um, California and then applied dental school. And then, uh, yeah, fortunately I was able to get into UCSF for dental school, um, did four years there. And then somewhere along the way, uh, became interested in perio, um, applied to perio and then, um, yeah, happy to be able to stay at UCSF for three more years. Nice, so how did you know that perio is for you? Did you know you want to go into that before dental school or was it like somewhere along the line? In, in dental yeah, so I think uh, my route is a little bit unconventional, and I think life kind of works out in a funny way. Um, having not went to dental school in the beginning and then ended up going to dental school, um, I thought that I was going to go be in dental school, finish school, and then start working. Um, I actually didn't know too much about perio um, coming into dental school, and specializing was never like on the map for me. Um, until second year, I took some uh, didactics courses for perio, and then. It's kind of hard to pinpoint on how like I got interested, but something kind of sparked inside of me. Um, and then uh, I was curious, I was interested. So I decided to like kind of go shadow and assist um, in the parody department a little bit more. And I think that's kind of how the ball started rolling. And uh, um, I took uh, about three months to kind of assist, learn a lot, and then just kind of decided this, I, this is what I want to do. And um, just kind of ran with it since then. Nice. So for people who haven't considered perio before, like what type of person do you think is a good fit for, for this specialty? Yeah, um, let me just backtrack a little bit. I think uh, a lot of pre-dents, uh, me personally, it's hard to kind of know what perio is. Um, I think uh, it's a very small specialty, I would say. Um, you know, like as a pre-dent, you know, ortho kind of, you know, do braces. A lot of us had braces before I did, um, you know, oral surgery, um, endodontics, the root canals. But I think that is one of those things where you won't learn too much about it um, once until you start dental school or even in dental school. Um, I didn't know too much about it either. But um, to answer your question, I think you have to kind of love learning. Um, I think just for any specialty in general, um, there's a lot of reading uh, research articles and a lot of the things you do is kind of backed up by evidence from uh, like research in the science literature. So I think you have to kind of enjoy learning um, as you go because you've probably heard that dentistry is a lifelong uh, learning journey. Right. Um, I think it actually holds very true um, the more sort of uh, specialty you go into, um, you kind of have to keep up with your learning, your skills, um, things like that. And I think before starting Perio, I wasn't very, uh, I guess, aware of this until I started learning more in residency. Um, and dentistry is a very meticulous like profession. So I think that's, if you're in dentistry, you have to be a meticulous person, but I think especially for Perio, in my opinion, it requires a lot of little attention to details because a lot of the surgeries you do, um, the success of it kind of ends up on even how well you place a small suture, um, how much bone you take away, um, how much bone you add. So I think just being able to um, be patient, uh, meticulous, and yeah, just a lot of attention to small details, things that you probably wouldn't think matters a lot, mm -hmm. um, but 
for perio especially in the long run, um, your, the success of your surgery depends on that a lot. So do you think you possess those skills? I mean, maybe the lifelong learner, you were, you were already like that, but being meticulous, did you have those skills before going into the specialty or did you develop those as you were, uh, as you were in uh, your perio residency? Um, I think for me, probably had a little bit of that um, as a kid growing up. Um, I was always a kid that didn't need to be told to put my toys away. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I've always liked to have things very organized. Um, so I think that kind of helps. I mean, it's, it's for sure a personality thing, but I don't think um, it's something that you can't learn. Like, I think you, you can learn to be meticulous. You can learn to pay attention to detail if you care enough about it. Um, that's my opinion, yeah. Okay, cool. So were there any exams that you have to specifically take for perio? Because I know like uh, oral surgery has its own exam, but like ortho, you can just take the GRE, right? So mm -hmm. what what is it like for perio? So when I was applying, I'm not sure if uh, things are a little bit different now or it might be different um, in the future, mm -hmm. um, but there were a few schools that required the GREs. Um, I didn't apply to any that required the GRE, so um, I didn't take the GREs. But if you know, if somehow you decide to apply to a school, um, like some Texas school requires GRE, for instance, um, so that's the one test that you have to take. Mm -hmm. um, I know the ADAT has been around for some time, but um, not a lot of programs have maybe implemented it yet. Okay. Um, to my knowledge, I don't know any perio residency that required ADAT. Uh, so but could you could you explain what the ADAT is, please? Yeah, so it's the advanced DAT. Uh -huh. um, so um, I actually don't know like a lot about it, but I think okay. it's um, it's similar to the boards that you um, that you take in dental school. Gotcha. Uh, and um, it's just kind of another uh, assessment of sort of to kind of rank. Uh, applicants mm -hmm. yeah but I think in the future I think um, it will be implemented more but not currently to my knowledge nice so you didn't have to take any exams then for this specialty that's I nice. didn't. Yeah, lucky me <laughs> did you have any friends who had to um, so in my class there were four of us mm -hmm. who applied to um, and I don't think any of us apply to schools that required a GRE okay yeah cool so could you please explain like what's a typical day like in as a perio resident like what what type of patients do you see and what kind of procedures do you do yeah so i think it's a little bit different uh first second and third year uh so pairs with three-year programs i think for the for every year it's a little bit different but um and i don't know how other schools other programs are but i can speak for ucsf mm -hmm. um so the first and second and third year do have um, a literature course every Monday. Uh, so it's usually supposed to be in person, but now we're doing it via Zoom. Uh, so it's uh, just a session from nine to 12 that where we can go over either implant literature, um, current literature or classic literature and perio. Mm -hmm. And that's how we kind of learn a lot of like the knowledge and didactics that we're, um, that we're learning in perio. Like um, I remember in dental school, a lot of the lectures were kind of through PowerPoints and you studied PowerPoints, but um, in residency, uh, at least with Perios, it's all from like reading research articles. Um, yeah, so that's most of Monday morning for us. And then as a first year, um, you start out the month of July having a intense like Perio book, textbook review. So yeah, for the whole entire month, you read a textbook that's probably like, 1500 pages long um, and that's how you kind of get your sort of like foundational knowledge and then um, day by day basis for uh, me at least it's the first year there's a lot of exams um, you're probably not aware of it yet but like in perio like you always kind of start um, seeing the patient with the exam and then you always go through the uh, the phase one or the the hygienic phase we call it um, yeah, so you do the exam. Uh, we do a lot of SRPs, um, any extractions that may be needed. Um, I'm only two months in to uh, my residency, or about, yeah, three months now. Um, okay. 
So I haven't done much surgery yet, but usually we see the patient for the exam. We do the deep cleaning the SRPs. We see the patient back one month after the SRP. And then that's when we kind of reevaluate, reassess everything. Um, and that's when we kind of see whether the patients need, um, you know, pocket reduction surgery or mm -hmm. any additional surgery. So first you just start off kind of doing a lot of exams. Um, and then uh, after that, yeah, like we'll do a lot of osseous resective surgery, which is pocket reduction surgery. Okay. Um, and then second and third year, their day to day, besides having class, um, it's just any kind of surgeries that the patient needs. So um, I think one of the questions you can ask later, I'm not sure you want me to touch on it now, but like what kind sure, of- Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different kind of surgeries uh, in perio. So besides the fund, like osseous resective um, is you know the probably the, the the basic surgery that periodontist does. Um, mm -hmm. And then of course you know there's implants, um, the sinus lift, uh, socket preservation, ridge augmentation. Um, there's a lot of uh, soft tissue gum grafts. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have connective tissue gum grafts, um, free gingival grafts, and things like that. So yeah, lots of different surgeries that we can do as periodontists. Gotcha. So, and you are seeing patients right now in your first year as well, right? Yeah. Um, I think the patient flow is a little bit slower uh, mm -hmm. compared to pre-COVID. Right. But I think uh, our school is doing a very good job at keeping us safe and also the patient safe. Mm -hmm. um, so even though the flow is slower, but I feel like um, I'm pretty lucky to be at UCSF where um, I'm still seeing patients and I don't feel like uh, my education is being put on pause in any mm. matter. That's great. So, and do you think that you had a really strong background in perio before you came into your residency or was there just a lot of learning like once you were in? How did that go? For me personally, um, I didn't have too much. Mm -hmm. uh, besides like, the didactic courses that uh, I took in dental school and then just kind of, picking up things here and there from assisting the residents a lot when it's in dental school. Um, and then I did a research project um, towards the end of my third year going to fourth year. Mm -hmm. So I learned from that, but I, I would say like, you know, when I interview for para residency, like I don't think if anyone asked me like a very technical questions, I'd be a good answer. And um, it's, I think it's, it's okay to not know a lot about in terms of like the technical knowledge about the specialty, because that's the whole reason of going to the specialty, right? So you can learn more. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I mean, even now within the last uh, three months, I think I've learned more about what I did throughout the four years of dental school. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, and so once you knew you wanted to uh, pursue this specialty, how, how was the you know, whole application process? Like how competitive is, is this specialty? I know you said four people in your class applied to that specialty, but how competitive is it in, like, in a general sense? Um, it's hard to say. Okay. Um, you know, if I were to kind of rank it, of course, like the consensus always says that uh, ortho or oral surgery is mm -hmm. uh, very competitive. Perio is a small specialty, so you know not a lot of people um, either want to pursue it or even know much about it. Because um, I know, um, you know, if had I gone to a school where there was no specialty, mm -hmm. um, I probably would have known too much about perio. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so I, I I honestly can't speak on how competitive it is. Um, there's stats online of how many people you know kind of match each year. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my biggest advice is, you know, don't, don't let the stats kind of discourage you right. from applying for residency. Um, and then regardless of whether you're knowing um, how competitive it is or not, you know, if you really want to do it, like it, uh, it probably shouldn't hold you back from applying. Okay. So, and last thing, once you, so once you're doing this whole application process, what did you do to make yourself stand out? Cause especially UCSF, for dental school, they have pass fail, so there's no rankings, right? So what else could you do to, you know, make yourself stand out and show that you really want to pursue this profession? Right. Yeah. So um, you know, if you go to a school that's great, um, obviously, study hard, get good grades. Um, you know, I think 
being ranked, the higher you rank in your class, uh, the better, obviously. Um, but if you happen to go to a school that's not graded, pass or pass at UCSF, um, a lot of us, you know, we still study hard, uh, still did well, but I think we try to kind of um, have a more holistic um, application. Mm -hmm. So I actually did a lot of uh, student government stuff back in dental school. Um, I was involved in a lot of clubs, did a lot of volunteering, because um, I wanted to make my, you know, application as well run as possible since um, it's hard to stand out having a pass, no pass transcript. Right. But I think after having gone through the application cycle, um, I would say that like having a lot of extracurricular may or may not make you stand out for Perio. Mm. That's my opinion. It might be more... Um, it might make more of an impact for other specialty, but mm -hmm. um, for perio wise, I would, you know, if I would go back in dental school, I probably would try to do more research because I okay. think um, perio being a very uh, research and evidence-based uh, specialty, mm -hmm. uh, I think they value um, students who have research experience. And, um, you know, if you have a research experience in perio, that's even better. Mm -hmm. But I think just having any kind of research experience, being able to, you know, say that you're, um, you can read research papers, understand them, um, you know, you can, you know how to kind of conduct an experiment and things like that. I think that would be uh, the, probably the biggest factor um, in terms of applying. Because uh, I remember when I was making my CV for the application, um, I was kind of, what, where should I put, like, which section, like, you know, volunteering, uh, student clubs or research and, you know, talking, after talking to uh, my advisors and faculty, like, I think I put research first. So I think that's kind of speaks mm. on how, um, how much they, how much pair of value research. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, everything that you know now that you're, you're in your residency, if you could give advice to like a pre-dent like me or like, most of our audience what what would you say for for us to do just to get started and if we're, if we're interested in perio or to get interested in, in perio you know as a pre dent so you haven't you know really learned much um, like the things you will in dental school so if you're thinking that you may want to specialize um and should that be perio i say would um you know get in touch with the dentist that you're currently shadowing um see if he or she knows any periodontist that he or she refers to maybe you can drop by um you know shadow for a couple of days to kind of see um what periodontists do because i honestly did not know what they do until dental school um so i think that's uh that's a good sort of good start to kind of see in person instead of just reading about it i mean yeah you can read more about it from online too you can go to the aep mm -hmm. uh, website and read more about perio um, and if you have any, you know, friends in dental school or, um, any mentor, things like that, of course, reach out to them. Yeah. That's my biggest advice. Awesome. Yeah. That's really helpful. So that'll be it for this episode, everyone. Uh, Dr. Nguyen, if any of our uh, audience members has questions for you, is there, is there a way they can reach out or like, like through email or anything? Sure. Yeah. Um, you can reach out to my uh, email. Um, I can send it to you, Nick, and then you can uh, post it somewhere. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll include it in the description of the video. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. I found it super helpful, and I'm sure most of our audience did as well. Uh, everyone, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you wanna know when we post new content, hit that notification bell so that you will be notified. And if you have any questions for us at Future DDS, you can always shoot us a DM uh, at underscore Future DDS, and we'll try to respond to you as soon as possible. And until then, see you next time. Thanks, Nick.